So the other day I came across the movie 2012 and if you don't know what that movie is about, basically it's about how the world was supposed to end on December 21st, 2012 and through like earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, volcano eruptions, all that. Uh, if you don't know what it's about, just I recommend just watching the trailer. Today, a decade later, we live in 2022 and we have one day shipping services, thousands of movies and TV shows just from the click of a button. And we even have robots that are vacuums that work autonomously. So you can tell that technology is significantly advanced. So after coming across the movie recently, I remembered about the times of how the world was supposed to end, but how it never really ended. But I, I, a thought came into my mind and the thought that came to my mind was that the world didn't end through any catastrophe or anything, but it ended in another way. What I mean by it ended in another way is that it ended in a way that human interactions are more rare and relationships are also more rare than they were before and how it was in 2012 and years prior. We live in a world now that there's a lot of just meaningless relationships and we just live in a fake society. So I feel like ever since 2012, technology has completely revolutionized our society. So let's take a look at a couple numbers real quick. All right, so you have Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook top they're they're definitely in the top five most used applications nowadays so all these applications came out in uh, before 2012 so by 2012 snapchat had 10 million users instagram had 27 million and facebook had around 320 million users today a decade later snapchat is at around 320 million instagram is at over a billion and facebook is about to hit 3 billion so let that marinate in your brain for a little bit. You can see how these vices have grown year year to year. So going on to 2023, 2024, I think they're gonna grow even more than ever before, basically. Let me ask you this. Do you know one person without a Instagram or a Facebook or a Snapchat account? If you, if you can name one person, I'd be very impressed. And shout out to them for real. So this goes back to 2012 because I feel like in 2012 and the years prior to 2012, so like 2011, 2010, the 1900s, the 1980s, people actually enjoyed and lived their lives for themselves and for their families other than living, wanting to live the lives for other people. And not only that, but I feel like most interactions are just foreign and superficial nowadays. So there's a Norwegian historian by the name of Christian Laus Lang, and he basically stated, technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. Basically, that means that technology can be a vital tool for the advancement of civilization, or technology could be a, a lethal weapon that leads to the destruction of society. So in today's world, there's two types of consumers. And I'm going to explain them and I want you to comment down below which type of consumer you fall, what category you fall into. So there's the useless consumer and the useful consumer. I made these terms up myself. It's, it's just, I made it as simple as possible for you to, for you to understand. So the useless consumer, you consume so much useless information that you basically turn useless yourself and you have nothing to provide to the table or to society in general. And don't get me wrong, being a consumer is not a bad thing. Us as natural beings, we we must consume to survive, such as consuming food, consuming water, um, all of that type of stuff. But consuming can really change your life if, it, if you consume the right type of content. So if you're someone that consumes motivational podcasts while you work out or you watch videos on how to build your business up little by little to have a long-term goal and be successful in the long term this is why would i consider a useful consumer someone that consumes the type of information that not only will improve their lives but will benefit them in the long term so i want you to close your eyes and envision this scenario i'm going to put in your mind ready you're in a tribe there's 21 people in this tribe but the tribe leader only wants 20 to prevent overpopulation the decision is between two people person one and person two 
Person one scrolls on YouTube endlessly all day, uses Instagram almost 24 seven and drinks beer before he goes to sleep because he can't fall asleep without a sip of alcohol. Person two, however, listens to motivational podcasts when he works out. Not only that, but person two reads before they go to sleep because not only does he know the benefits that reading is to the subconscious mind, but he wants to gain knowledge as well. Do you think the tribe leader would choose person one or person two? Who offers more to the tribe? <laughs> Obviously, person number two. Not only does person number two offer their strength and services to the tribe, but with all this knowledge, person number two can spread his knowledge and about all he has, about his workouts, about what he's read to the tribe and so that the tribe could grow as a, as a whole. So in my opinion, 2012 was the breakout year in the creation of useless consumers, meaning that as the years pass on, there are more and more and more useless consumers and less useful consumers. So after this video, I want you to look at yourself from a, an objective point of view, and I want you to ask yourself, what content do you consume on the daily? Is this useful to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Will this content improve your future in any way? Like, do you even remember what you saw on Instagram today? I want you to comment down below and let me know what you think of this video and if you can relate to anything that I said.